Good evening. Booyah. We are live and on the air. Hey, yo, hate him with the hind, all that stuff. Welcome to Omni Bros Live. Okay, I'm out of breath. I'm Jess. I'm Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault. And here with me, as usual, is my fabulous co host, Omar. Omar, how's it going? It's going. I'm Omar. I don't have a cool nickname like Omni Dog. Omni Hermano, perhaps. Omni Hermano. <laughs> uh yeah yeah happy to be here thank you everybody that's watching for joining us uh we're going to talk about halls and reads and uh show a little bit of the books that are coming we'll show you the books that are coming out this wednesday or tuesday rather in stock tuesday speaking of in stock tuesday mm -hmm. jazz fire away with that jingle <laughs> in okay you want me to do my jingle no i do not want to lose our sponsor no, oh, kidding. Right. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Do it. No, Let's that's all right. InStockTrades.com, no, where you can get up to 50% off your, all your collected editions, uh, an extra 2% for loyalty discounts. They have sales, frequent sales that add 3% to your already discounted books. Over $50 in the United States gets you free shipping, free, wonderful, lovely packaging, and lovely customer service. That's InStockTrades.com. I do have a jingle, but I got shamed into not doing it. No, no, I want to hear it, man. Nah, I don't really have the tune. I got the lyrics, but I don't really have a good tune for it. You need an auto tuner. May I suggest <laughs> investing in that? In that. <laughs> and I know uh, Riley has his own jingle, so it's like a rivalry of who's got the better jingle. Right. I have a professional musician setting my words to music, um, but I just have I don't have the right music for it yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. Till I oh. get proper music. Okay. Because I don't have a tune for it yet. Um, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, well this is my tune. <laughs> That's the tune. It's pretty good, man. Pretty good. <laughs> That's great. all I've got. No, it's great. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. I had a migraine this morning, but it went away like around 2 p.m., so I'm a little groggy and out of it, but I'm here. Okay. Well, let's get the show started. Uh, do you haul? Did you haul hard? Did you haul uh, big? I, I, I took advantage. This is stuff from when we have the Omni Bros code. So I, I, uh, I hauled a lot of stuff that people had been advising me to get. Oh, yeah. I sent it to the tune of Mr. Plow. Mr. Plow, that's the name. That name again is Mr. Plow. <laughs> Maybe that's you can that's that. Yeah, that is a great one. Um, so I used the Omni Bros discount and got Hellboy book, Hellboy Universe, Rasputin, The Voice of the Dragon. Everybody's been bugging me to get this book, so it better be good. Oh. Even. Heathen. Yeah. I think the, the ladies were talking about that book, right? Isn't that their book they're doing? Um, is it? I don't know. I think so. I um, What is Heathen about? I have no idea what it's about. You said everybody. I was not, so I'm not everybody, I guess. <laughs> what is uh, Heathen? Uh, Adis is a Viking, a warrior, an outcast, and a self-proclaimed heathen. Adis is friend of the Talking Horse Saga, rescuer of the immortal Valkyrie, Brynhild, and battler of demons and fantastic monsters. Adis is a woman, born into a time of warfare, suffering, and subjugation of women. She is on a mission to end the oppressive reign of the god king Odin. Ooh, this actually sounds pretty good. So strong, strong female character. Right, which is why Fariha liked it. Okay. In a way, I will like it. So, yeah, this actually looks pretty good. Oh, I like the art a lot. Yeah, it's really good. No hardcover, just the trade paperback? As far as I know, it's just this one trade. Yeah, digging that art. I'm always a fan of that kind of, I, I don't know, what is that, color washing, the way that they do those colors? Not colors. I'm sure it's cheaper to print. Yeah, but it, it is kind of interesting. Yeah. So that looks good. I can't wait uh, to hear what you think about it a year and a half from now. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I read a good review of Sons of the Devil by Brian Bucatello with art by Tony Infante. Um, Brian Bucatello, that's the guy that worked on Flash, the New 52 stuff. Right. Sons of the Devil. For New York like Times, blah, 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 comes a psychological horror story about Travis, an average guy trying to get by who discovers that he has familial ties to a deadly cult. Told across, across three decades, Sons of the Devil is an exploration of cults, family, and the dark side of human nature. It's true detective and orphan black meets Helter Skelter. Okay, Ooh. cool. Mm, here's some of the artwork for it. It's three trades. So this looks good, too. It's got that scritchy, scratchy kind of artwork, but I don't really mind that. If it's done well. Yeah, keep, keep going. Show me a little more. I... Okay. Okay, here. Here we go. There's okay. some more. I'll show you some more. I have no idea what I'm showing. I hope Emily's mom isn't watching and catches me showing something bad. <laughs> she knows what kind of books you're into. <laughs> oh, okay. I dig the art. Yeah. The independent book. Who's the publisher of both this and Heathen? Uh, this is Image, and Heathen is Vault. Vault. Okay, cool. I don't know. This may be my first Vault comic. I don't know that I have anything by Vault. But yeah, that's Sons of the Devil. Um, I think Geo sold me on this book. Angela Asgard's Assassin. You probably already know about this book. I'm behind on it. Whoa, this is cool art. Not uh I'm not the biggest fan of Angela. Oh, okay. I don't have a problem. I don't have any preconceived notion of her, so I don't really know anything. And, and it's, and it's not because I'm sexist. It's because I never liked the character, and I don't like oh. the, how they retconned her into the Marvel Universe. Oh, see, that's what's so great about knowing nothing and having a terrible memory is that I can just open this up and enjoy it. Yes. Yes, I, I Marvel wants every uh, one of their readers to be like you. <laughs> and this guy can't remember the last event that happened last year. Cool. He's yeah. our target audience. Uh, people, especially Trigonosis, has... Yes, Tyler Trent, I finally got heathen. Uh, Trigonosis and Kemi Jacob have both been bugging me to get Paul Jenkins' sidekick. So I finally got it. Leave me alone. Leave me fuck alone. <laughs> so, um, I I interviewed Jenkins when that book was about to come out. Oh yeah, he was really excited about it. Yeah, because he had just come off of uh, okay that really really bad Civil War frontline frontline. Yeah, but that was uh, bad. Y yes, you yes. don't like anything though. I I like Sidekick. Thought it was funny. <laughs> oh okay, good. Yeah, because it, it's supposed to be funny. Take right? it back, ass hat. <laughs> No, no, uh, I like I liked it. Um, no, Civil War Frontline was that's another thing for another day. Uh, yeah, I liked Sidekick. I thought it was cute. Um, and this is also something uh, in the chat that people have been talking about. Eternal Empire. This is by the same team that did Alex and Ada, Sarah Vaughn, and Jonathan Luna. Wait, so Alex and Ada was not done by the Luna brothers? No, that was done by Sarah Vaughn and Jonathan Luna. And so this has the same kind of Luna artwork in it. He and uh, Vaughn work on the script together and the story together. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Let me, okay. So it's got his art in it. I've, uh, I've never been, been a big fan of his artwork. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I should be because it totally looks like an anime ripoff. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I just I never dug it because I... I I did like girls and I liked sword. I thought they were good, but I just, I didn't care for the art that much. I wasn't, I don't know. Something's missing. You know what? Yeah. And, uh, I'm well, there's sure no it's gonna shading sound... on his face. Is there anything? Right. I know it's going to sound blasphemous, pretty... yeah. but it reminds me of Pat Lee's artwork. And I have an intolerable hatred for Pat Lee. That's why, maybe that's why I don't like it. Um, I don't even know who that is. So, uh, that's a that's a that's a whole episode of 
Pat Lee and what he did with comic books and how many people he ripped off. Um, oh, wow. Sounds like you have a grudge there. Not personally. I just know that uh, a lot of artists went underpaid and unnoticed because he took credit for a lot of the stuff. Um, he was uh, he was he started off as a Rob Liefeld guy. Like uh, what was Blood Pool? If Gabe were here, he could tell you. I think it was a series called Blood Pool or something like that. And then he went on to do uh, his own little series uh, where he developed this kind of Ghost in the Shell, kind of like that artwork right there. That Mamoru o Oshi ripoff artwork. Um, and then he went on to do the Transformers reboot. And that's where like a lot of things got blown up. Like his studio, Dreamwave, he created a studio. And like he took a lot of people's, pretty much a lot of talent, introduced uh, a lot of uh, new artists and writers into the comic book world and never paid them. Oh, see, I think the problem here is you have too good of a memory. You have a lot of baggage you drag to every comic book, whereas I have like a knapsack. <laughs> You've taken enough drugs that you don't remember what happened yesterday. <laughs> right. You're living yeah. in the moment. Man, this Civil War is amazing. <laughs> I've never read anything like Identity Crisis. This is great. All these characters <laughs> are acting just like themselves. Right. Exactly. Is, is that no, all you hold? Or do you have no, some? no, no. I this was a recommendation by Mel and Anita Schumann, Big Man Plans from Eric Powell. Um, they just recommended it, showed me some of the artwork, and it looked really good. I like Eric Powell. Yeah. I don't know. It's got Nazi prisoners or something in it. I, I don't even know what it's about, but it, I think... Visceral and tragic tale that shows even the most marginalized in society can exact gruesome revenge if they are driven beyond their limitations by rage. That sounds like how you're feeling right now. I don't have rage. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> I don't. Okay, so this has got a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, but I don't know anything about it. This was just a blind... Art by Eric Powell, written by Eric Powell and Tim Boish. Is that Dark Horse or Image? This is Image. It's pretty okay. cheap, too. It's 15 bucks. Tack on that Omnibros, Omnibros discount code, so it was pretty cheap. But, um, yeah, I've also got Hillbilly, two volumes of Hillbilly by Eric Powell that I need to read. I like that. I thought that was good. Um, and here is what I've been waiting for to finish the other S.H.I.E.L.D. book, S.H.I.E.L.D. the Human Machine. And the back of it says, this is how the world ends. What the what the hell? Why, how is the world always ending with Jonathan Hickman? I think he's very pessimistic. Uh, it sounds like it. The world's ending in everything I'm reading this summer. I think the world ended in Avengers, in his Fantastic Four run, and definitely in his Secret Wars. Yeah, he definitely has a formula. Hmm. Um, and I read... In East of West, which is an apocalyptic story, which is great. I don't know if you've read that. Right, I have. I read a good review of this online, so I decided to get it since it was discounted. It's from Lion Forge, Magnetic Press. I like Magnetic Press. Yeah, uh, Ghost Money, Death in Dubai. Ooh, you had me an omnibus. <laughs> A team of military veterans, this is London 2025. Team of military veterans are out to uncover a secret fortune built from the ashes of 9-11, so vast that it could disrupt the entire global economy. Whoops, I can't show you that in case Emily's mom's watching. Disrupt the entire global economy. Their primary target is a beautiful young billionaire who crosses time zones with disconcerting ease. They don't know it yet, but this mysterious lady of Dubai has ample means to defend herself and to fight back. Yeah, show me some of that artwork there. Chief. Okay. Let's see. Let me highlight myself so you. Yeah, you yeah. Constant yapping doesn't uh, distract from it. Yapping? It's more like, ooh, <laughs> ah, look at that. Or <laughs> that artwork sucks, Jess. What are you talking about? <laughs> Let's see. I dig those mm -hmm. angles. Yeah. Not, and that's a weird thing to say, but... Uh, um, yeah, I like no, I mean, he just knows what he's angles. doing. 
Yeah, so this got good reviews. I get a lot of uh, good. Um, what was the original language that it was uh, published in, or where did it come from? My country, or huh? I don't know that I know the answer to that. Okay, what up, boys? how's it going? Hey, what's going what's on, man? Kramer. What up, what up? First published in France. Okay, cool. Oh, I can't even try to pronounce the name of the author and illustrator. Is it Jock something? No, it's I don't even I'm not even gonna it's oh. right there. Oh that's that's, that's how you pronounce David. <laughs> that's Dominique. I can do that one. And uh, Terry, maybe. So yeah, it's got pretty much, cool art. What's the price on this book? It looks solid. It was twenty five dollars. But that's I before the for, discount code? Before the discount code, yeah, it's nice. Dude, that's a steal for twenty five bucks if the story is good. Right, it could well, totally suck. That's true, but I read a good review of it. That's what made me pick it up. An online review from a source that's usually pretty right on has suggested a lot of things that always hit for me. Oh, you're talking about Near Mint Condition, the YouTube channel? I don't think yeah. I've reviewed that book. That's it. Yeah, old reader, uh, ig ignorant reader. It was the uh, <laughs> dinosaur reader, old reader, new reader. And then finally, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, finally, the third. I finally got the third volume of Suicide Squad. Oh, you you were missing it. Yeah. Wait a minute, but I thought so the there's eight. eight. There, the eighth one came out. I thought this was the. Uh, nope. This is uh, the one I was missing. I got eight earlier, and I think when it came out. I'm sorry, eight is not out yet. Seven is out. Okay, maybe I got. I I feel like. Did you double dip? No, no. I know I needed this <laughs> to fill a hole. <laughs> oh, okay. I know that's, I needed that's a topic to right there. Just yeah, really. See your double dips. Just as double dips. Uh, no, oh, I needed it to dips. fill a hole, and I, I need to get volume eight. I I feel like volume eight just got re um, released, though. Because I could have sworn it, I remember talking about it. I can't believe Suicide Squad's on volume eight. Well, we only need one more volume, and that finishes off the Suicide Squad. Yeah. So that's that's good news. Uh, they and then decided to, uh, that it's solicited. Now, of course, it is DC. They could totally cancel it just to hear all the fanboys scream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, was, that all, was that all your haul there? That's all I, oh, and I also hauled, uh, I haven't taken it out of the plastic yet, Izuna Volume 2. Oh, yeah. Love that book. I just finished reading it last week. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. you, you? I assume you've read the first one in the Scarlet, uh, Legend of the Scarlet Blades. You assume that? <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. You might have to talk about it a little bit more. Uh, this is manga. Except oh, gross. Book. Never mind. Stop. Except Jess doesn't call it manga because it, 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 manga. Re it reads from left to right. It reads but from the proper direction. But it's got like every manga aspect, like the illustrations. Oh, you mean it's like, uh, style it's like the Avatar. Style world. No, not like Avatar. Yeah, it's exactly like Avatar. <laughs> this is European. It's not it's an like an anime, Avatar. but it's not an anime. You're wearing an anime shirt, you dipshit. Sidekicks right here, Trigonos. No, I'm wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt. It's different. Sidekicks is right here, so don't worry. I got it. I'm going to read it soon. Like, the end of this week soon. Ooh, that's a Paul Jenkins book. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Je or Gabe, what was the book that uh, Pat Lee started out on? Wasn't it Blood Pool? Blood, Blood Pool? Pat <laughs> Is that what he started out on? I, I have no idea. Pat Lee. Oh, you failed me. You and your image knowledge should have gotten that. I think it was Blood Pool. Well, Pat Lee didn't even do his own work on Transformers. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I went off on that earlier, and Jess was like, man, you're just angry at the world. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Well, and that poor artist did all that work and got no credit for it. And no money. And then uh, Dreamwave just disappeared. Just Pat Lee locked the doors one day and that was it. Yeah. yeah that's what when you was this? Back in the 90s, early 2000s? Early 2000s. 2003, 2000, 2003, 2004 is when it went kaput. Is that all, brother? Or you have like 30 more that books is, under you? No, that is it. Wow, okay. Jealousy. Uh, let's see. I hauled uh lots of stuff well a lot of the same stuff so i bought something from uh brandon lee archer Bruce Lee's son brandon lee from the crow <laughs> no 
not Brandon. Oh. That'd be Brantley cool. Archer uh, from the group, and I bought the entire Fables in hardcover. I'm surprised you didn't already have those. That's a great purchase. Yeah, I want those. Because I've been waiting for an omnibus, so I'm like, okay, DC, you can now announce the omnibus. Since yeah, I'm now that you have it. So yeah, I bought now that you bought it, I hope there's absolutes that come out. And I got a great deal from him, uh, and then the first volume of Jack of Fables, which is one of those books that I think you know people really don't like, but I loved it, especially when he was. Have you guys read all the Fables in Jack of Fables? Yes. Nope. And nope. Yes nope. and yes. Okay. <laughs> like when he's trying to hook up with the three sisters in his like uh, the crossover, the fair. Uh, oh yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, guy. Uh, it, when Jack of Fables became Jack Frost, that kind of sucked, but I really liked it. So I got that, and I also got this uh, stack of Kickstarter books from him. These oh. are these are amazing. These are the I have a story to tell about this. Uh, this is the Osama Tezuka stuff, the God of Manga. Um, so these are the three books, four books of uh, DMP's latest cro cross uh, Kickstarter. So I kickstarted this back. Um, I can look back at my history, but it's been a few years. It's been about six years ago. I kickstarted this. Uh, that guy got fifty six thousand dollars from everybody and never heard a oh. word from him. Oh my gosh! Right. Now the estate can't do anything about it. Kickstarter can't do anything about it. Which you, I mean, you always take a gamble with Kickstarter, right? Legally, they yep. we can't do anything. He has fifty six thousand dollars that. Uh, you know, he probably blew on Coke and hookers. I don't know what he did. Well, did never took a good pause. It. Yeah, that's what yeah, I did. Yeah, for with him. It. I didn't get anything out of it. Anyway, uh, so a couple years later, uh, the folks at DMP, which is an established publisher, kind of like, how would I compare? Like Dark Horse, right? Like, let's just compare it to Dark Horse. They go a lot of Kickstarter route with manga, especially when it's this old stuff, Osama Tezuka stuff. So they did this. My Kickstarter got canceled for some reason because of my credit card payment or something. I got an email like two months after like they canceled it. And I'm like, hey, can I pay for this in another way? And they were like, oh, I'm sorry, you've already been removed. And I'm like, well, fuck, I've been trying to get this book for like five years now. So the book came out and they are on some, They it came out late last year. And they are having some kind of legal problems where they forgot to pay this thing called taxes for the mm -hmm. last few years. Um, so I don't know if that company is going bankrupt. I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm never going to get these books. And then he hit me up on the chat uh, saying he had some Osama Tezuka stuff. And this is stuff that I was missing from my collection, this and Phoenix. And uh, I was like, yes, I will take all four of those, please. So now I'm finally having to uh, this in my hand, so it's it's got a good ending. And I've been reading it, because I've been waiting this long to read this stuff. So this is what I've been reading today. And this so is you like got a, a box with song. all 15 Fables hardcovers? Yes. Two boxes. Wow. Because you also shipped the manga. Yeah. 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 So, because I got tired of waiting on the omnibuses, and I'm like, I really need I I have the trade paperbacks, but I just wanted to upgrade. Cool. Um, but that's all I hauled, and but I did read a lot of stuff. What about you, Gabe? Did you haul anything this week? Yeah, I got a couple things. Uh, first off, I met Matt. I met uh, Matt, Matt Miranda came to the store. Nick came to the store with Matt. And yeah, and you guys made like, a manwich. Uh, yeah, we made manwich. We touched each other from the front and the back. Saw that. Yeah, so that was awesome. So shout out to those guys. Also, shout out to Jimmy. Jimmy out there in uh, Omni Bros world. He doesn't really post much or anything like that. But a lot of us know who he is because Jimmy's a super generous guy that really has helped a lot of us out finding certain books and other items that we've been looking for. But I wanted to give Jimmy a big shout out because he's a part of this haul. Because because of him, he visits the store. I got this incredible Hulk Volume 1 omnibus from him. He gave it. He gave it to me. Wow. Jimmy's a good guy. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's been two crazy big whale books that I got from, from people out there in the Omni Bros world. So a lot of thanks and love to, to that guy for hooking me up with this. This is super cool. I was buying the uh, Epic Collection because these things are so hard to find. I was buying just the Epic Collections. 
or a Hulk because now now I upgraded. Now it's another double dip. I love that cover, that Alex yeah. Ross cover. This one's actually really good compared to the original. I, I, you know, in a perfect world, not to complain, but you know, the, the Kirby cover is the one to get. But this is one of, I think Alex Ross's better work on these covers that he did. I like. I always like getting the variants, mm-hmm. unless I have I like, my, like for my Uncanny X Men. Everything that I have is usually the the variant, or I guess what is it called? The non DM direct market version. Um, because I figured I already get the original cover inside, unless the cover is completely horrible like that new uh john cassidy uh conan cover that he did oh yeah, oh, yeah that's a that's a pass that's a fucking so big the, pass. The, the problem is like i hope they don't do like they undercut the orders like they did with amazing spider-man volume three right where everybody wanted the direct market variant instead of the mccone variant and then they sold out like that day I think most people, at least me included, I would normally go for the comic cover, whatever one that is. Sometimes that, that yeah. switches. And those, are, and those are getting harder to find because collectors are now going for those because those yeah. are they have a smaller print run. So, yeah, like Amazing Spider-Man 3 sold out the first day. What was the other one? There was something. I think it, I want to say it was Avengers 3. Avengers 3 sold out. And definitely, yeah, that sold out really quick. Yeah. definitely Uncanny X-Men Volume 3 sold out the first day, like the, the classic cover. Yeah, the Paul Smith cover. Yeah, because I went with yeah. the Jerome Pena. So, oh, did you on purpose? Yeah, oh, okay. I'm a I'm a fan I'm a fan of the variants, man. Because I figure I get the original cover inside of the comic book anyway. You're what's wrong with the comic book industry. You can buy those. Variants. What I'm letting you guys have the rare stuff. I'm <laughs> <laughs> How is that wrong? I'm not flipping them. <laughs> Even if you were, that'd be fine. You do you, Omar. You do you. I'm do me. I'm going to do me. Yeah, man. You do you. All right. So also with doing you, uh, this is more for Jess. Jess will like this one a lot. Uh, let me get it real quick. Has it got titties on it? Uh, mm-hmm. No, there's no titties, but there's some Batman because this is Nightwing. <laughs> you had me all excited. You were serious. <laughs> I still yeah, got the choke on it, buddy. Oh. Wow. You're gonna feel guilty if he passes out. In- yeah, I'm gonna die, and then what's <laughs> gonna happen? Gives him a concussion. Yeah. So yeah, this is it. This completes that collection of Nightfall. I was debating. Yes. I was sitting there debating which one to buy. I was going, do I want the Venom on the bus or do I want Nightfall Volume Three? Venom bus, Nightfall Number Three, Venom bus. I guess this is to complete the collection. You know, Kelly yeah. Jones also drew like some of the miniseries in the Venom Omnibus too, right? Yeah. Yeah, that guy's all over the place. But I'll be picking up that uh, that Venom bus pretty soon because I really want to check that out. Because I think there's gonna stuff in it. They have enough material. There's gonna be three of those. Just as a heads up, if you want to go down that road, I'm in. I'm in. And I'm gonna get that that Carnage versus Spider Man one. No, Venom versus Spider Man. Spider Man versus Venom, but it's fe- featuring nothing but Carnage. Featuring fucking maximum Carnage. Yeah, you're paying $125 for an 18 issue crossover. Sold. Oh, now, now, now you don't buy the crazy bullshit either, right, Omar? <laughs> yeah, I'm debating on getting the damn uh, Sandman Overture Absolute. I'm like, it was only six issues, right? But his artwork is so beautiful. It needs to be oversized. But it's $100 for six issues. Is it $100 or is the Absolute 125 Whatever it is, it's six issues. So I, I feel you. But yeah, so uh, one of the best Batman stories out there. Done, complete, three perfectly fine, beautiful omnibus editions. Science sealed, delivered on my shelf, where it should be archived forever and loved and appreciated forever. Grown. <laughs> Come on, Jess. I know you hate it. Jess, did you read? Like, I, you know, you joke about it, but how much did you read of Nightfall? I read the whole thing for years. I was pulling floppies back then, and I read the, the whole read event. Nightfall, <laughs> Night Quest, Night Ezreal's Ten. Revenge, Ezreal's Mother, everything. Really? When yeah. did they? When did he lose you? It wasn't Nightfall. Nightfall's a pretty solid story. I like. Like, I can't imagine you not liking Nightfall itself. I. They lost me when. After Batman's back was broken, Alfred did the neurosurgery to repair his spine. Uh huh. What's wrong with that? 
Yeah, okay. It does at least three times a week. So you <laughs> you believe that a man dresses up as a bat at night? <laughs> that it fights crap. The, You're okay with that. But you I'm draw drawing the line, the line at, at neurosur a at spinal surgeon for a butler. That's where I drew the line. Okay. That's where it lost me. And it also lost me the fact that Bane wanted him as, at his weakest after all he had fought all the villains. Why didn't he want him at his strongest when it would have been a real challenge? Well, if you had kept reading, Jess, there is redemption. There's redemption for that later on. But you have read... And, and Azrael as Batman in one of the coolest bat suits ever. I did read that. I did read that. I was that, pulling that was all like Batman and Superman at the time. Wow. And that was Blue Superman, wasn't it, at that time? No. no I don't even, that oh, was the I'm force. thinking more than... That's the return of Superman still. And then, like... Uh, Blue Superman didn't happen until like a few years after that. Oh, Blue Superman, so cool! I'm gonna get that that trade that came out. There's, I think there's gonna be five of those trades coming out. I'm custom binding those things. I've never read that shit. That's oh wait up! Go go. Okay, uh, that was the stuff that I've never read. So I stopped reading comics at the time. I hope he's gonna come back with like a custom bind of those Blue Superman books. <laughs> Yeah, I know you hate it a lot, so I didn't know at what point did you just say, this is stupid. So it was in your younger days when you were still pulling them that you were like, this is dumb. I'm not going to get this in any kind of collected format. Uh, I I didn't say that when I was young. When it, I was old and it came out in collected format, I said, no, I'm not going to do anything with this. All right, I'm back. I, don't, I don't want any a part of it. <laughs> All right, what'd you bring? Wait, what did I miss? All of a sudden, I just hear Jessica. I don't want to be a part of it. He's still talking <laughs> about Nightfall. <laughs> All right, so you're talking about we're talking about Blue Superman. So he yep. bought this crazy collection at the store. That's yeah. every day for you guys. Every day you were like, guys, look at this. <laughs> it almost yeah, it's true. feels like it. So this collection was like '90s scalper or uh, speculators galore. It was crazy. Oh, so it's it was part of like 15 long boxes. But at least like one long box with all Captain America number ones, like the white cover and the other cover. From uh, Heroes but, Reborn? From Heroes Reborn, yeah. From Heroes Reborn to Rob Black. What did you cover. guys give that guy? 15 bucks for his gas? No, we, we, no, no, we gave him like 250 bucks, something like that, 300 bucks. For 15 long stuff. bucks, okay. Yeah. So what There's did you get? There's all crazy stuff in there. But, so what I got out of it was the, the blue Superman. Yeah, that's going to go up in price. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> Not looking for pride. I'm looking for the fact that this is badass. I Blue seem Superman. to recall that you sold your collection and you made a YouTube video about this. Yeah, but yeah, now I got Blue man. Superman. But it, it glows in the dark, Omar. The Superman logo here that is super cool and new glows in the dark. You're smarter than this game. Glow uh, in the dark, Omar. <laughs> no, bigger, no, no one is bigger than glow in the dark stuff. Okay. Uh, okay. Glow in the dark, 3D. That's you're always cool for buying that kind of stuff always <laughs> what else you cool. got was there uh, any like was there anything good in there that you're like oh my god nobody thought that was gonna be worth money then oh battle, battle chasers. chasers this one has the battle uh, let's see if I yeah guess. i remember this that battle chasers like gold foil stamp on her butt that booty that booty i got a couple of those you got a couple of that cover i got a couple of that cover oh yeah send me one no way i'm not gonna be jack off all over this stuff and cry <laughs> Wait, let me isolate you, you so you can show that. Show it again. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Some gold foil booty that says Battle Chasers. You can use it before me. <laughs> oh, I already did. Gross. No, I'm not. Uh, so another part of that, like, there's another thing that was like an entire long box of uh, Danger Girl number one. Yeah. That's cool. Dude, we got J. Scott Campbell come to the store. These things are going to fly out of there between now and that signing. I bet what? Jess is even going to buy one. When is he coming? Is he coming the same weekend that uh, Adam Hughes is? The same day. Yeah, Adam Hughes and J. Scott Campbell signed. Oh, my him. gosh. Jess, are you going to take your statues to get signed? <laughs> I was thinking about taking my Danger Girl Absolute to get signed. Oh, do you have that? You so yeah. I, I have that and, that and the Deluxe Edition. Do you have the oh, Battle God. Chasers Absolute? I do. I don't uh, know anything about it. I know you guys have showed it like two consecutive days in a row, and I'm still not that interested. But no, I don't have it. What a hater! Not that interested. <laughs> not that <laughs> now interested. I'm a hater. 
I'm not. I don't know anything about it. It's not on my radar. You're throwing shade at our fucking absolute battle chase. I'm not throwing shade. I just say I'm not interested in it. It's just, just, you're, just you're interested wait, wait. in everything. Just, <laughs> just throwing shade, okay? Just, just it throwing shade. Now, next he's going to say, this danger girl absolute is lit. You like how he just threw that out there too, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, look at just getting all hip and stuff with this. Cool I have a young girl. daughter. I pick up the lingo from her. Uh, well, that's cool. I love when you find ninety stuff. Like you're one of the few people that I know that gets excited about that. Um, and then uh, I got a more this Batman or Batman, sorry, Battle Chaser Prelude. This is the Prelude. There was a bunch of these too. Uh, okay, in, in all seriousness, all kidding aside, what are those books worth? Uh, the Battle Chase is probably a couple of bucks. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Blue Superman, it's priceless. Oh, pr Blue Superman, I found in quarter boxes. You can't lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I sold Blue Superman for a quarters. <laughs> but then, um, also some just regular stuff from the week. Uh, the return of Superboys or uh, Super Sons. So you're picking up singles again? Just, just stuff that I, yeah. Only things that I really like, like this uh, Jorge Jimenez art is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Super Sons is great. I can't wait for that omnibus. I'm so who's, pumped. Who's writing omnibus. that new series? Uh, Tomasi still. <clears throat> wait. Tomasi. So this is the new series, but it's not going to be collected in the omnibus. No, I don't think it is. I don't know, because this is a mini series. Yeah, it's like 10 issues or 12? I think it's less than that. I want to say like 8. I don't know. I might be wrong. And then if anybody's been keeping up with the singles world, uh, Infinity War is prime. Uh, there's some big doings that happened in this uh, in this issue. I'm not going to spoil, but nobody cared one bit at my store about Infinity War, like the countdown stuff. Nobody cared. We have tons of that stuff lying around still. Uh, all of a sudden, <laughs> something happens here, and then it, it blows up, and how everybody wants to get up on the Infinity Wars. Uh, I, I browsed I over to the chat for a second, and they're like, and Philip is saying, uh, Jess, I give everything a chance, and like you. Uh, but bat F Battle Chasers. And F <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said it didn't interest <laughs> me. Uh, I'm not saying F it. I'm not hating on it. I'm just saying I I just am not, I, I got, don't know anything I, about it. I, I got to say, like, I kind of got to agree with Forgelli. He's a Danger Girl and Battle Chasers are both pretty bad. Yeah, but there's no, 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 no. No, the stories are <laughs> no, ass, uh -uh. man. Yeah, no. they're, not, they're not good, dude. Don't say they're good. No, they're how, not. How, Battle Chase is a video game. How can it be a bad story? If it turns no, into a but I mean, game? I'm just realistically like, yeah, it's a great video game story, like any other video RPG, but I just got it because of the artwork. You know, I'm not going to bullshit anybody. <laughs> You're going to dive into the greatest fucking RPG story ever. Not really. That's basically it, Omar. Come on. Okay, maybe you. You, you, need, more you need to. You need to. You need to check yourself. Reread Battle Chasers and enjoy it. Okay, maybe one day. I've read. I reread it a few years ago, and it was. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember anything that happened in that book. But see, you're a new. You're a new man it, now, so you can it, check it I know out. it didn't finish. That that's for sure. All right. Was there any other '90s crap that you got out of that box? <laughs> I didn't get 90s crap to begin with. I got all 90s gold. All, all treasures. <laughs> I'm pissing Make Havoc off. <laughs> <laughs> I think he all... He, see? like So there's an audience for this 90s stuff. I'll tell there you is. what, dude. I'll tell I you should what. Be, I need to have my own 90s, like, like uh, I don't know, segment or, or show on the network or, or something. I, uh, I will say that if they released a variant edition of these omnibuses in glow in the dark or prism or lithium or whatever vibranium whatever the fuck <laughs> lithium. Co lithium, like i'll take the lithium cover <laughs> yeah or yeah. the holographic uh a uh what is it called fatal attraction card like variants i may be stupid enough to bite and get those you know what i'm saying like the first run of what's it called the dc new 52 villains it had that. Oh, those lenticulars. Uh, yeah, that kind of yeah. cover. So if they started doing that with like first runs, like the first two hundred, will only have this one variant cover. Oh fuck. I'm in. I'm in. Do you? you I don't. I, I, like, I want to say I'm not the type part. of man. Like I'm not the type of man that would do that, but I am not above. <laughs> I think I, I, I'm a weak man, and I will get those if they ever do that. Just like the uh, the like button, glow, glow in the dark Venom cover. Yes. 
I would hold that to my lamp every night before I turn my lights off, just so it glow in the dark. So I can go to bed to a glow in the dark. What about you, Jess? Would you be a sucker for things like that that are limited? Um, maybe. I I love glow in the dark pops. I love glow in the dark stuff. I mean, I like flocked See? pops. So there's no reason I wouldn't like glow in the dark covers. Uh, well, I meant like variant covers in general. Like, if they were if they were gimmicked up. Yes, like die cut covers with Wolverine's claws. Oh, oh you're talking to that good stuff. That sounds cool. Wolverine <laughs> 75 right there. I'm not man. saying no to that. Welcome no, to the not... 90s, you idiots. That's all they did. But I would... <laughs> That's all they're doing now, too, if you think about it. All these. Oh, yeah, they're, they, they, it's they the all. It's, it's even worse now. Even worse. Now it's getting ridiculous with that stuff. Well, I don't know. We haven't gotten Unity Gold yet. We haven't gotten that bad. Well, no. I mean, at least where they actually put gold on the motherfucking cover. That they hasn't been that bad yet. Right? Well, we have. There's that baby teeth uh, variant that's out there that's wrapped in goat skin. Ew! What? Yeah. Real goat skin? Yes, real goat skin. Who I published heard that? What's baby teeth? Baby teeth is from. I'm gonna say, yeah, it's Donny Cates. It's about this girl who gives birth to the Antichrist. Huh. Uh, Sounds uplifting. They did a, like a, a Neonomicon cover that was wrapped in, uh, in uh, goat skin. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, who was the guy that – was it uh, Keith Giffen? Somebody took uh, – my okay, my favorite gimmick was somebody took like a stack of 50 number ones of their comic book and took a gun and shot a bullet through all of them and then signed awesome. each one of them. That's the kind of gimmick shit I want. Yeah, shoot like five omnibuses with one bullet and sign them, Chris Claremont. Sold. I won't be able to read half of the story, but that's a gimmick I'll, I'll jump into. No, all that dialogue that Chris Claremont puts in those books will make that bullet bullet bounce off those books. I mean, that's because you are illiterate. Oh, yeah, illiterate. <laughs> if it's glow in the dark, I, I, Did I ever tell you guys my brothers, my younger brother used to skip those yellow boxes and just I get know, it? A lot of people like, do that. Like um, and just read into the dialogue. I'm like, man, you're such a fast reader. Oh, you're an idiot. You're not reading the damn <laughs> narration. Even though they were practically saying what was in the yellow boxes. Uh, so what did you guys read? Did you guys read anything? Did you just buy books to put on your shelves. I'm still working through uh, Onslaught. Onslaught. Yeah, I see your uh, dust jacket up there. Yep. I thought you were using it like to start your fire. No way, man. That's 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 a sense of pride right there. Onslaught is coming. Onslaught. What about you, Jess? Did you read anything? Uh, I am this far into Pick Avengers 2. That's how far you were when you I had you on my show last week. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of am probably going to have to reread all that. Because um, th then I picked up, and I don't know where two of these books are right now. But I've been reading, reading all new, rereading all new Wolverine because I want to do a video on it because I love it so much. And oh. then I went on a, a video kick where I actually I, I feel like I I read more than that um, because I did a uh, a vid on a bunch of things that I had read. I also did my top ten um, books, but I, I made a lot of videos this week and this weekend, so. I think that took I I covered all of the stuff that I read in my vids, so I, I think that's all I really read besides the stuff I did in my vids. And Trigonosis just reminded me of something. He said uh, there. Are, so when Mark Grunewald died of a heart attack, part of his uh, when they cremated him, his ashes went into the ink and colors of the Squadron Supreme trade paperback. And I had that for the longest time, but I wanted to get the omnibus when it came out originally. So I ended up selling it. I kind of wish I had kept it because it was so unique. What did his ashes go into? The I mean, ink, which which book? The Squadron Supreme. Uh, trade paper. It'll tell you because in the book it says like Mark Rumal's ashes were used to make this book because he loved that story so much. The um, um, the trade paperback. Yeah, but there's several several printings of the trade paperback but oh, one of those one okay no it wasn't the first one uh oh. but, but it will tell you like his his ashes were mixed in with the ink and the colors to there's that kiss in print, the blood to print in the book so that was a uh, 
that's a lot of love, man. But I mean, that was that was his baby. That was his Watchmen for Marvel. Um, I forgot Iron about Cardinal that. Said, Iron Cardinal says there's a hundred uh, Fantastic Four variants that dropped this week. That's ridiculous. And one of them's a torpedo exclusive. Well, I guess you can help out somebody with that, huh? What's the tor- who's, who's the artist on the torpedo exclusive? Uh, Humberto <laughs> Ramos. Oh, I'm surprised you guys didn't go with Jim Lee. Try to sucker Jim Lee into doing it. Some kind, of, some, kind of, some, some kind of con- some kind of contract, right? You can we'll break see. a contract. Him and your store owner, buddy, buddy. That's right, but he's not going to do anything for Marvel. Just get him drunk. <laughs> okay, sure. That's the way it works. Just do it. Just get him wasted. Have you read? Um, Avenger standoff assault on Pleasant Hill. Leighton no. Watson asked me and um, Jess about that, and I hadn't read it yet, but it sounds pretty cool because I looked that up. Um, no, that was during the time there's way too many crossovers going for me, and I just wasn't interested. I've heard good things about it. I just I haven't read it yet. Uh, okay, so speaking of reading, did you you read Onslaught? How far are you into your Onslaught omnibus? Uh, not very far. Uh, maybe like a dozen issues. Oh, okay. Okay, but so, it's awesome. It's like all kinds of cool X Men action, X Force action, uh, Holocaust, which is a really cool like. Uh, Age of Apocalypse. He was, a, he was a herald, not Age of Apocalypse. His name was just yeah. He was part of Age of Apocalypse, but he was like a herald for, uh, for Apocalypse. He was like his death. He's like in this really cool like body suit armor with a gun. Bad. Do you remember when he first appeared? Uh, yeah, I was doing. I forget. Uh. He appeared in the uh, first full appearance was in Age of Apocalypse, but right after execute during Executioner's song, they released this thing called the Strife Strike Files. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember okay. that? And it showed yeah. a picture of Holocaust like two years before Age of Apocalypse. So you were like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" I had his toy when I was a kid. He was cool. Yeah, I have that. Uh, um, that Strife Strike File is an extra in the X Force Omnibus. I'm gonna say this. It's totally it's in the Executioner's stuff. song. Uh, is it hardcover. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I it's it good. I mean, you could tell like that's when Fabian was just writing these long-winded things. I don't know if he was getting paid per word or what. Some of that shit was just hard to follow, especially the like the whole dynamics between Cable and uh, Strife. Well, uh, Fabian uh, said that he was just thrown into that Executioner song because it was originally supposed to be like Jim Lee and. Rob yeah, Lightfoot and people like that were supposed to be involved because it was about that time in Image when they dropped him into Image. So he had to like whip up like 18 issues almost by himself. You know, he had to plot it on us out of nowhere. So I can see why it would be kind of worried. The, uh, the original crossover was going to be called Sins of the Father. <laughs> oh. But they went on with the uh, Executioner song. So I read a few things. I uh, finished uh, this just came out two weeks ago. This is the Ninja Turtles uh, IDW. And I've praised this book a lot. It's my the greatest to me incarnation of Ninja Turtles. Uh, a lot of shit has happened. Characters died. I'm not gonna reveal who. Uh, characters come back. <laughs> characters die and stay dead. Uh, but the, they're pumping these out pretty quick. That are like uh, three a year now. This is Volume Seven because there's two ongoing series now. So. Read yeah, that. They're hammering those out. They used to. They used to take a while in between releases. Yeah, and then I read this, "The Lighthouse" by uh, Paco Roca, which I really, really liked. And um, I talked about it a little bit on my channel. Uh, but during the Spanish Civil War, and the um, one of the soldiers kind of escapes and decides he doesn't want to be a soldier anymore, so he befriends this old guy that's running a lighthouse and gets to know him. Really short story, probably about 60 pages, if that. And I really liked it. So the a couple of the comments that I've gotten was to check out his other work called Wrinkles, which is a lot. Um, it's been translated into English, so I want to check that out. But I really like that. And then I'm currently reading The Crater, which is Osama Tezuka's book. And this is like uh, Twilight Zone. So 30 pages are like a chapter, right? So each chapter is like a different story. And really digging this. Um, there was something else I read, but I couldn't remember. I, um, I put up my reading stack. Maybe it was 
an X Men book. I don't know. Uh, but that's it. Was it Charlie Gambit? No, that story sucked. <laughs> But I am excited about the uh, newly announced uh, trade paperback that is going to pretty much give us just about every uncanny X-Man issue out there, with the exception of the hopefully upcoming Omnibuses Volumes 4 and 5, because we know they're going to split those up. Um, One of the solicitations was for a trade paperback uh, that kind of lines up the trial of gambit with the other comic right after that which i think is the hunt for xavier yeah the hunt for professor x because they're they're also doing the magneto because this is the original um rogue nation trade paperback this is older but they're redoing this as a thicker trade with more stuff in it oh they are yeah, so a lot of these books are coming out. Yeah, they came out with X-Men in blue recently that had all that maggot stuff in it. <laughs> they did. It's uh, X-Men Gold and Blue Zero, which yeah. had nothing to do with the ongoing series. So. Super good you guys want to check out the previews and talk a little bit about those? Yeah, oh, let's see what's coming out this week. Cycle Cleveland's in the chat. Uh-oh. I, miss, I miss that guy. haven't talked to him in forever. Yeah, WTF are they talking about? You need to pay attention to us when we're talking, Cycle, and not be... <laughs> Cycle Cleveland was offended that he watched your Mean Comments episode. <laughs> was he on there? No. No, oh, well, no he leaves he's... only positive comments. I was going to say, he needs to step his game up. I don't know what he does for a living. Uh, works, in a, works at a hospital. Works in a hospital, hospital yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's what he, he mops, does. mops toilets or something like that. Do we think they'll ever do a House of M omnibus? Uh, I try to think. It would be a really big omnibus if they included. Yeah, it would be. Series. If they left out the ongoing material, like from the ongoing books, uh, maybe they could do it too. Like they can split it up into two. <laughs> uh, but but it would be big. Yeah, I think Marvel Marvel knows. But it's been a. When the hell did that come out? Was that 2005? I want to say it was 20, 2005, wasn't it? So that's 13 years ago. I guess it's time that they do it because the hardcover's been out of print for a while. Cycle, you weren't mentioned because you don't leave mean comments. Don't be yelling at me. You, you're yeah. a positive guy. He was Dude, offended he wasn't mentioned. There's there's a difference between like crazy stupid comments and and, and mean comments. Yeah, yeah, these were out of bounds comments. And if we if we ever talk about people throwing up on the in, during the chat, then we're definitely <laughs> that was a Wait, no, I I did mention him because he was the asshole that was correcting me in the way I was pronouncing like Brew Baker. What up, John the Uncanny? Throwing you did mention Cycle guy. Cleveland. Yeah, he leaves mean comments in the chat. Yeah, that wasn't what we were talking about. Well, we don't care about that. Yeah, we're used to that. These are mean comments that were left on my channel. He's, he's never said anything positive about Gabe once. That is kind of true. He has a love-hate relationship. Yeah, but neither, neither has Omar, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> I think one time you caught me off guard and I was really drunk. I may have said something nice about you. Right. And you're, ta- <laughs> and you're tasting you. comic books. I'm like, wow, gave you really, really smart comic books. See, uh, that's what happens when you're drunk. You really, you know, your truth comes out, and you realize. How yeah, great it, and it Vino Veritas, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, let's look at the previews, guys. Okay, you're gonna pull them up. I'll pull them up. Yep. Let me screen share, and then you can do the thing on me. Nash hey, villains. Get- I'm glad you got the book. Good. All right. Let me know when you guys see the screen. We see the screen. Cool. Everybody? All right. IDW. Uh, image. Sorry. Uh, so coming out this week, we have Outcast by Kirkman, which Jess really likes. Mm-hmm. Uh, volume 6. Rat Queens. I hope to keep doing more hardcovers of that. You like that? You like that book, Jess? You, no. you hate Kirkman. He stuff. hates that I hate shit. it, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, sarcasm, sorry. Oh, oh, it's like another uh, Nightfall. Okay, I get it. Uh, versus... Don't even know what that is. Do you guys know what this is? Volume no, one. It's a, it's a it's a valiant book. No, it's an image book, fool. Ooh, it's I do like the artist. Yeah, guy, it's art kicks. It's 
$16.99. They almost have me hooked when they do the $9.99 books. What uh, do they do on those first volumes? Then we have Bloom County Best Read Throne. Uh, no, this is, no, fuck that. Go over to that G.I. Joe Weird American Hero. This is awesome. Oh, man. I wish I was a hardcover. What the fuck? Yeah, you, they, were, they have been doing the hardcovers. That's the thing. They stopped. Their, IDW is just all over the fucking place with their collected editions. It's like they stop a project halfway through and they're like, oh no, we'll just call it an omnibus and release so it like, soft cover. That was about the time when uh, Dreamwave was doing Transformers. So there's a real like resurgence of that 80s licensing stuff. And that was well, uh, the J. Scott Campbell work was in that. Uh, the, well, he, he only did, he did, he did the, the covers copy. for right. the image for the image books. And then when Marvel got the rights back, he they used his covers just to do the trade paperback stuff. Yeah. Uh, then we have Star Trek Discovery. Which Picard is coming back. Woohoo! Um, definitely. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you don't look Picard, fool. Then we have Aquaman by Peter David, book two. Hook uh, hand, Aquaman, hook man. Look at that. I think it's bad. So collecting Aquaman 9 through 20 and Aquaman annual one. Sold. I'm getting That's that. That's for Geo. Gab, Batman Beyond, volume three. Batman, are you picking this up, Gabe? The Ninja Turtles, Batman number two? Uh. Uh, it'll be on my list. I'm not gonna pick it. It's not gonna be a day one purchase, but I'll. Pick I'm it. thinking. I really like that first one. That first one I like. Great. I like the first one, but I. S I didn't buy it because I think because they also did the adventures, right? Like the cartoon ones. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping they'll do a. Uh, there's Dead Man. Uh, this Whoa, is Captain Picard's in the chat. Okay, That's I'm not what Professor X? <laughs> I don't believe you. It says <laughs> it. Yeah, no, he is. He said yes. I will be coming back. Okay, I swear, like, I'm sharing my screen, and if I'm missing uh, Jean-Luc Picard because I'm sharing my screen, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> well, you better start getting mad. Uh, okay, so we have Champ. – I'm not even a big Star Trek guy. Uh, Champions Volume 3. This is the, the Mark Waid stuff? Well, I can't remember if he stopped – hold on, let me look real quick. Because I don't think he – Yeah, it's Mark Waid. Must be the last of his stuff there. And then we have Deadpool by Daniel, Blah! Volume Two. So yeah, <laughs> sure that will be fifty percent off. Uh, here we go, new printing. Still won't print that uh, number thirteen though. Uh, Marvel Two and One. This, this is big. I I love this stuff growing up. I'm gonna pick that up. Uh, I gotta do an episode on that with somebody. Uh, Spider Man: Craven's Last Hunt Deluxe Edition. Let me see. Buying that. I was gonna get the Epic Collection. I got the Epic, so. I was it comparing is, it. It's like weird because it they, is they like have two my, one of my favorite stories. I don't. Why in the hell are they collecting Amazing Spider-Man number fifteen? Is that the first appearance of Craven? Yeah. Ah man, it's just one of those collections that they're just throwing things in there. Like, what if? Yeah, that's a pass for me. Yeah, the Epic Collection's got different books, and then this has different books in the Epic Collection. So I'm I'm gonna pick it up. I love Star, that storyline, dude. Star, I do too. Star Wars was, volume eight. I, wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to Craven real quick. Um, no, what the hell is this? Wolfpack? No, let's go back to Craven real quick. That was the first time I ever dealt with like a, a story about suicide as a child. It was really weird for me. Oh, don't Spoilers, worry. Todd, Craven Todd McFar McFarlane. Don't worry. Todd McFarlane brought him back. But yeah, but I guess I still ate a bullet. Uh, let's see. And then we have Star Wars Volume 8 and then Wolfpack. This is interesting. Why? This is Larry Hammas series. Huh. Have they shown up in a comic book lately or something? Nice. And then we have X-Men Gold Volume 6 Till Death Do Us Part. That's all that wedding bullshit. Which wedding special as well. Boom Comics. Uh... Mighty Morphin, Power Rangers, The Lost Chronicles, Trade Paperback. This stuff is good. I'm digging it. I know uh, what's his name is leaving the the book though. The guy that's writing it currently. Oh, Kyle. Uh, Kyle uh, Higgins. Higgins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is leaving the book after this Shattered Grid storyline or that's Old Man. <laughs> no wait, fan. I think they're doing an Old Man Tommy thing, which is like a Old Man Logan with the Green Ranger. Uh. Oh. Guess you got to catch in on that. So we have the Disney Masters. I'm just going to highlight some of the things that, if anything piques your interest, let me know. I know there's a lot of manga here for uh, Gabe. Gross. 
Let's see. This thing. I might get this, but I don't like the way they're doing it. They're making me buy Mickey volumes, and I only like the Duck comics. There's a Roughneck on here by Jeff Lemire. I know a lot of good things about that. There's Grief by Frank Gogol. That's a big hey, deal. We know that guy. That's awesome. Can you imagine having your book on the preview? Like, that, that's like that's in game, man. That's that's it. That's what you want. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. I know the ladies are going to interview him too. Yep, you were right. It is the roughneck, but Robotech. This is all the old, uh, the old comics here. Glad those are seen back to print. Comico. I think they were Comico comics. Grunt. Have you guys read any? Have you read any of this? You guys, Valerian. I've always wanted saw, to dive into. I saw it. the movie. Yeah, I did too, and I hope the movie is nothing like the books, because the movie wasn't that great, which was disappointing. You were there. Um. So yep, yeah, that's it. We we don't know what's going to be fifty percent off. I and... don't see Batman sixty six again. I think that was delayed until the end of the month, wasn't it? Oh, wasn't that somebody okay. said that. So I'm gonna stop okay. sharing. Oh. And there we go. All right. So let's take it to the chat. Ask some questions. Answer some questions rather. Call it a night. What have you been up to, Omar? Uh I start my new job next week. Yeah, yeah. oh, so you passed that drug test, huh? Lucky. <laughs> You motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm happy for you, man. I know how rough, I know how it is not to have a job for a while. That sucks balls. It does. I mean, so it was I'm cool. I'm sure in hindsight, I'm going to miss hanging out with my kids. You know, it was a cool summer. Uh, I got a lot of reading done. I mean, I literally redid my basement down here. So it was... Oh, we got to do new room tours, full you and me. Yeah, I usually do it. Um, I do it once a year on my channel um, where I do an in-depth look at my stuff. Oh, you realize there's this other channel that is like a network. Well, I'll use the same video cool. and put it on yours with a different dialogue. Like, hey, this episode was brought by InStock Trades. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it feels nice to have all my books now in one place because they were yeah. kind of scattered about a bit, you know? So, what, so what's, what's, what's the story behind you doing the move or the redesign? Oh, um, my wife wanted a room upstairs to like to do her own stuff. Like she's a writer, so she likes to write. And when she was cluttered with my comic books, she was like, but I'm like, this is an inspiration though. Some of the best stories ever written by man. You mean she's not like every other writer? And like sits at Starbucks and does her writing? No, no, she does not do that. She's not. <laughs> I'm working on my script. She she is uh she did not quit her job to go write the greatest American novel. No, nothing like that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Yeah. And you know to do crafts with the girls and things like that. So I was like, That's yeah, right. of course. She gave me my. I mean, she gave me this entire basement. Like it was. Hey. I have I have kids. What's up, baby? Yeah, what do you want, Papa? Like, like, like in person. Give me a second. What do you want? You want to turn it on? Were you All supposed right, to be taking care of the kids? You just like put them in a room with the dog. I just I just, I just turned the crib upside down and put a brick on top of it, and I'm good. Yeah. Cool. Um, how about you guys? How'd you spend your summers? I know, uh, Jess went out West for a yeah, while. That's true. Gabe, you went to San Diego comic con. You've been working a lot. Did you take any time off at all to be with the family or just work this summer? No, I did a lot of, it was mostly work this summer. Uh, San Diego comic con changes at the store, uh, moved my, moved my collection downstairs here to my master bedroom. So I love that, dude. There's nothing better than me waking up and being able to like look at my collection every day and just be able to like be around it, which was the main purpose. I moved it because I never really got to appreciate. Now every morning I wake up and I open the shutters and the light shines on my collection and it's just this beautiful experience every morning. Don't let the don't let the sun hit those omnibuses directly. No way, man. I'm good. I, I angled <laughs> all that right. Okay, for sure. But yeah. Um, Maybe I'll do a room tour and put it up on on the the, uh, the network. Uh, maybe you could do it too. Maybe yeah, we could all I do agreed. it. We maybe we could do, do like that topic idea I was talking about. Yeah, no, there's several topics we wanted to do. Uh, um, omnibuses and hardcovers that are out of print, or 
We can just do books that are out of print because there are a lot. Yeah, little, that sounds a, good. But there's a huge list, so that would be an episode to itself. Like, well, like I was talking about before, where we get people to send us pictures of their collections and stuff like that, like I the did, cultivated collection, or maybe show us your, your double dips. You know, that way we get people to send us content. I'm just being lazy. I want these people who are watching the show to provide <laughs> us with episodes, so we could do stuff like show us your doubles, show us. Your cultivated collection. What if your collection, you know, you had to purge it down to the best of the best or something like that? I think that's what the ladies are doing. They were putting it out in the Facebook group, like, hey, give us ideas for episodes. And we never were that smart. No. Like, ever. Most of the time, it's us talking five minutes. Hey, what are we talking about today? Okay, yeah, cool. Let's do it. Let's wing it. We can do it. Um no, actually, what we could do is do a live video tour of our rooms too, like per episode, because uh, one each, you know, because it's gonna That's take a good idea. Like it's gonna take. I can, you know, we can use our phones or whatever, because this records in 10, 1080p anyway. Um, in case you want to stop and highlight something, uh, I like that idea. That'd be cool. So let's see. Is there any questions in the chat, Jess? Are you falling asleep? You okay, buddy? No, yeah, no, I'm right here. I'm just listening to you, buddy. <laughs> I'm okay. Matt Miranda, Great Lake Omnibros. That's right. Psycho Cleveland spent the summer losing his vacation because his PTO got used up as FMLA. Oh. Hope everything's okay. So did we know that wait, I asked this in the chat earlier, not the chat, but our our chat. Did we know that Flash Silver Age Flash Volume One was <laughs> Was what? I didn't even know it was out of print when you asked that question. So that's yes. how stupid I felt. Silver Age Flash Number One is getting reprinted with a a new dust jacket that matches up with the the other dust jackets from the Silver Age. Yeah, it's getting reprinted. I didn't know that. I saw that on. Uh, I think that got announced like at the beginning of the summer. Yeah, I saw that on the FOC. I think it was the FOC this week at work, and I was like, wait a second. I didn't know this was getting reprinted. Um, yeah, I don't keep up with Silver, like the DC stuff before Crisis on Infinite Earth, so I didn't even know it was out of print. But I wanted to do the out of print episode because I just found out like there was an epic collection that's out of print. The Avengers Final Threat, I think went out of print, and I had no idea it was out of print. Uh, I own it, because I was going through my Avengers epics. I'm like, do I own all the epics? And I was double-checking uh, the like the latest. You know, I do what I do is I look at the latest epic that I got, and I go through their checklist. I'm like, oh, wait, do I have Final Threat? I couldn't remember. Yeah, X-Men Ghost has been a bit of a waylet for a long time in that epic collection. Um, yeah, Ghost wasn't epic though, was it? That was pre-epic, if I'm not mistaken. It's not an epic. I didn't think it was. You've got it, don't you? Yeah, just say. Uh, I thought it was the pre-epic uh, epics. God, that sounds stupid. <laughs> the epic epic. Well, it was their pre-epic epics that they were doing, which is ridiculous. It's okay, I'm still mad that they're doing Heroes Reborn or Heroes Return Fantastic Four in complete collections. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't say epic on it. It's a pre-epic epic. Omar? Uh, I was double checking the prices, and it is Final Threat, and it's going for ninety eight dollars. X Men Ghost is going for eighty eight. Mm. So that's the kind of thing, like, so people can keep an eye out for other, for somebody else or for themselves to flip whatever. <laughs> that wasn't the reason. I was just uh, doing it in case you were collecting the Avengers epics or X Men trade paperbacks, and we're like, well, shit. Because I hate that. I hate starting a series, and then I'm like, oh, she had Volume 4 sold out, and everybody's selling it for $5,000. Yeah. But that's what you get for not buying everything, Omar. Come on. you got to buy all of it just to make sure you don't miss yeah, out. I, I'm, out I'm, total, I'm, to, I'm totally talking about Irredeemable, guys. <laughs> I'm totally talking about Irredeemable. Oh, you mean the book that me, me and Jess probably like, 
just pounded the sand on for like yeah you were like a year you before need buy, you need no you need to buy it now and i'm like ah fuck that book i'll get it when it comes out later <laughs> like and i sat on it and now it's i don't know i don't know what the hell boom's thinking well a lot of people seem when that happens to them and they start chasing after it they seem to be the people who go oh i'm gonna wait till all of it comes out i'm gonna, i'll buy every every you know volume of it at once and that's how you get caught up where volume two or volume three or somewhere in the middle randomly. Yeah, it, it's it's almost I <laughs> hate nice uh, Jimmy I, Cricket. I hate thinking like that, though, because I know for a fact that DC bases their orders and like on pre-orders. Right. That's why a lot of these books get canceled. A lot of these books by DC are like, OK. We're canceling this because there were not enough interest in it. <laughs> because nobody wants to buy it. Whoops. You know, sorry. Yeah, you know, but it sucks. Because, well, it sucks because I'm like, okay, I'm buying Supergirl by Peter David in the hopes that DC finishes that out. Right? I'm on volume, what is it, uh, four. Volume five has not even been solicited. So I, it's up in the air. Who knows? Well, that's uh, like a Kabuki. I didn't know that the third library edition was but, still out of print. But with yeah. things like with them, they're actually they actually went through with all of it though. They released all of Kabuki. I'm talking about like even if you're getting it as they're coming out, you don't know if you're gonna get the whole story. Oh, I see what you're saying. That that's what aggravates me. I should be rewarded for getting them as it comes out. Damn it. <laughs> Give me the whole story. Like I'm we are very blessed at Starman. Like it wasn't selling well at all. And we ended up getting the six hardcovers. Like I was, I I was, I had a fear that DC was. Oh, but then they stopped. They stopped doing the trades in the middle of it. That's well, see, that's what happened. They stopped doing the yeah. trades because they didn't sell. They didn't sell enough of the hardcovers as it was, right? And that's one of those books that I don't want to say most people, but some people want in their collection, and they're almost impossible to find. Yeah, they did it with unwritten, the oversized hardcover. All I've got is volume one of that, and then they canceled the whole thing. Oh, I was really looking forward to that. Yeah, that's that's the kind of stuff that irritates me. Um, Trigonosis is asking if there's anybody's heard anything about Ape Sapien replacement uh, things. I know that In Stock Trade sent everybody an email saying, "Don't worry about sending your book back. We'll ship it when it comes out." I thought that now, was so the Hell on Earth Volume Two. There was an Ape Sapien Volume Two that had an error. Oh, never mind. Maybe you're right. Maybe it was uh, Hell on Earth Volume 2. Yeah, I think it was Hell on Earth. I don't know if mine has a mistake or not, because I don't remember getting that email. But I uh, feel like I ordered it early. Everybody did. It's okay, BPR well. Yeah, okay, so BPRD, Hell on Earth Volume 2 had the misprint, right? Where I think a page is missing. Um, So, they sent out an email saying, don't worry about shipping back your Hell on Earth Volume 2. We'll ship it out when it comes out. Now, some people in the group have said they added it to their order, but I had an order last week, and they didn't add it to mine, so I don't know. Um, I figured I'd give them enough time to go through everybody's order and sell yeah. out before I say something. And what was the story on uh, BPRD Hell on Earth or whatever? Um, There's a misprint it's in It's a misprint oh. in Volume 2. And Dark Horse just is, uh, released their corrected edition. Oh, okay. And if you got it from in stock trades, or they told you to keep the book, and they would ship it out when it came oh, in. Well, so some good. people, some people got it added to their order last week. I was telling Jess I didn't, so because I, I, I ordered books last year or last week, like X Men Revolutions and Batman by Kelly and Moink. Oh, cool. Because I remember how difficult it was for people to uh, cut the cover off of that fourth row when they did the corrected edition. Man, it seemed like it was heart surgery. <laughs> oh, so it was missing the page, Trigonosa says. Or, I'm sorry, Chase Cho says it was missing the page. That happens a lot. I wonder how that, that, guy, that kind of stuff falls through the crack. I mean, I don't know how the sausage is made or anything, but you would think it would be a little more of an automated system. Well, quality control seems to be a problem at DC most of the time. I always have a fear of getting those first print books at DC. Because you guys... You can that first print of a uh, Hush Omnibus, for sure. F fourth World, right? You guys had an issue with that. Right. 
Oh, my boy, Psycho Cleveland's correcting me. <laughs> I always have to ask Jess. Jess, how do you say his last name? Uh, I, well, I've always said it. Munch. 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 Okay. Moake. Jesus, sometimes I feel like that guy's just making up shit and I believe him. <laughs> sure. From now on, I'm going to call him Moake. Dog Moake. That sounds like a kind of drug that keeps you awake. <laughs> Moik. Got, got it. Moik. Okay, so we weren't the only ones because Fur Jelly didn't get it added to his order either. So I'm sure they're catching up on stuff. Yeah, I'm sure they probably got like an allotment at a time from DC to replace or something. Or not from DC, but Dark Horse. I, how okay, Psycho Cleveland? It's Munch. <laughs> okay, yeah, Munch. <laughs> Moake. He said you said Moake or something. I said Moik, Moik, because I remember I was trying to pronounce it the way you did, but I couldn't remember how you said it. Man, man. Did he do uh, what was that book he did? Am I thinking that book? Um, Bat Batman? No, not Batman. He, no, I, he did I, Batman. I know who Batman is sometimes. Okay. Uh, here it is. Is this one? It is, yeah. No, this is Doug Monkey. I was thinking of uh, Major Bummer. Anybody remember Major Bummer? Yeah, that's Doug Mankey. Yeah. We're probably butchering that name too, right? No, it's like no. It's probably Doug Monaki, or you know, however clearly you would say it. No, it's it's Doug Mank. But uh, yeah, so uh, if you haven't read Major Bummer, people should pick up Major Bummer. That's a cool book. Mr. Miyagi. Doug Monkey. How long do your IST orders usually take to ship out? I feel like mine is taking a while, but maybe I'm just impatient. Um, a day or two? It depends on what you're ordering, right? If you're ordering brand new things, like two two brand new books that came out. I'll use Wednesdays. and I'll use my order as an example. Uh, I got the X-Men Revolution, right? That came out um, last Tuesday. However, if I added something like Naruto Volume 37 on there, that book is old, was out like 2007. So they'll have to find it. And if they don't have it, they'll have to wait for it to come in. So that holds my order back. Yeah, that's what held my order back was stuff like Paul Jenkins' sidekick um, and, I, and Heathen and those things. They were sure older, they were like so... Holy shit, we sold our third copy of Sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it took so long. If I had ordered just new stuff, it would have gotten here by the I end. I bet Paul Jenkins was like, oh, I just sold my fourth copy of Sidekick. Woohoo. Oh. Well, see, my, my IST orders usually ship out within like a day, but it takes me a week to get it because I live on the other side of the country compared to you guys. You guys get it in a couple days, it seems like. No, I was telling Jess that that's not the case, though. I live in Kentucky. They're in Tennessee. And sometimes, like, it's all – it's in the hands of the U.S. Postal Service, I swear. Like, if they get a third party, if they, you know, hire out UPS or FedEx, and then sometimes I'm afraid to look at my tracking number because my shit is in, like, Europe somewhere for some reason. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, I could drive down there and get it. <laughs> so, you can um, yeah, so it doesn't matter where you really live. Sometimes you get you guys get it. Yeah, you got you and you and uh, Riley have shown off books before I have even gotten it, and we place our order on the same day. <laughs> um, no shit on Sidekick. I wasn't. I I actually <laughs> like that book. <laughs> I was just saying it's just one of those books that nobody really gets anymore. Except me. It's older, right? Well, there's a guy talking upside down in there. Oh, because he's upside down. It's a misprint. You're going to have to ship him back. He's upside down. Looks like some hobo guy. Cool. More hobos. Gotta love those hobos. Love hobos. With their fingerless gloves. and Yeah, yeah that's what this wand. guy had. He has his... He has his... Uh, lunch on a stick there. 
That's back when hobos were cool and they would try to get you onto a onto a train with them. And tell you stories about their adventures. It's a funny book. I like it. Moonshine. Hell yeah. I forgot. Nash villains. He lives in Nashville, I assume. Tears of Mar Moonshine? Moonshine, man. It's Kentucky. Huh. What is Psycho Cleveland talking about? Do you guys know? Who's Vince oh, B? Oh, I don't know. No, he's he like, lost me about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> That's why I miss him in the chat. He's the wild card of the chat. He really is, yeah. You no, never I, know what that guy's going to say. Going. It's been a while since we've had any of that stupid Howard Stern talk in the chat. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. but my, my favorite thing about him is the guy can go on a tantrum about something. And no matter what, he will stop to correct my ass in the pronunciation. <laughs> you know, Mar just say munchy. I still gotta wait for. Uh, I'm still waiting for him and Jess to settle on that uh, uh, Led Zeppelin argument they had. Oh, I was right. He was wrong. Whoa. He admitted it, sort of. I'm just waiting for his reaction now. Mispronunciation drives me nuts. I should have mispronounced mispronunciation. Mispronunciation. <laughs> there it is. Jess was right, but... But... <laughs> I never said they were a singles band. <laughs> the question is if they had any top 20 hits. Wait, here's my question. Sold any singles. Are you guys picking up anything tomorrow? Or yeah, tomorrow. I'm not. I I'm didn't not. see a single thing that you talked about. Nothing against you that I wanted. Yeah, I'm surprised it's Omar's fault. No, it's Omar's fault. Nothing good came out. Yeah, my fault. Uh, so I'm surprised nobody's talked to you into that shitty Daniel Way omnibus, but Riley Riley has trashed Daniel Way so much since the very first day I knew him that I there's no way I'm ever picking up anything by him. Well, that is the irony, is that he buys the omnibuses, though. Right, because he's a completist. Well, I am, too, but there are times that I'm like, I can't do it. Like, I can't go against everything that I stand for when I go and badmouth this guy. You, you as much that as I now, like, but then it's going to be like uh, uh, the spider clone omnibus. That you'll well, find you know, I found one for like 30 me. bucks. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. yeah. Well, I, I, had, I had Daredevil uh, Volume 2. By Bendis during my Amazon uh, glitch, and I ended up selling it because uh, I had the the hardcovers. The I mean, I paid eight dollars for that. Uh, was it eight fifty six or something for that omnibus? And I'm like, I could keep it and find Volume One because even back then, in 2010, Volume One was out of print. Um, but I ended up just selling it. So I found my so Volume I, I, One at a used record store. So it's not always true. Sometimes I, I, I stand by what I say. Sometimes. Sometimes. But if it's an X-Men book, like as much as I hate Chuck Austin, you're goddamn right. I'll buy a Chuck Austin Omnibus. <laughs> Give me that bad writing, baby. Uh, well, the chat's now talking about Greta Van Fleet's singing. So this is probably a good time for me to give the in-stock trades plug because they don't seem to have any questions for us. No, you've answered everything. <laughs> InStockTrades.com, where you can get collected editions for up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add an extra 2%. They quite often have an extra 3% off on certain sales. Over $50 in the United States gets you free shipping, fabulous service, and fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. No jingle? Um, he, he's working on it. He's got a song like. like he, I guess I could set it to the Mr. Plow thing, theme, thing, <laughs> theme song. I can't wait for our next episode on Wednesday. Effective immediately, immediately in stock trades is no longer sponsoring him <laughs> based on Jess's <laughs> jingle. That's right. I'm afraid that my jingle will make them lose uh, subscribe uh, customers. So yeah, no, maybe I just won't sing it. Um, what if they love it and you become like a YouTube sensation? I won't. 
Wow, you are so negative about yourself. <laughs> oh, you, you definitely want with that attitude. Yeah, you were so you were so like quick to say no, never gonna happen. Never gonna be late. <laughs> no, maybe if like a three year old with a great voice sang it, then that'd be a YouTube sensation. But uh not a person my age like badly botching the Mr. Plow theme song. Um, I, I have a question I want to answer before we go, though. Uh, Nash Villains is asking, why does Daniel Way's Deadpool suck? Now, this is my opinion. There are a lot of people that like it, but I feel like he did not understand the character, so instead of making him witty and smart, um, and I hate to say that about Wade Wilson because he's kind of a moron, but he is witty about his moronic ways. Um, he made him into a buffoon and a cartoon character yeah. uh, that would break the fourth wall, but not, not do it as great as he normally would in other books like Joe Kelly's run or Fabian Iciesa's run. It's just not, even the, the latest uh, Deadpool is uh, by po, po I'm not even going to pronounce his name. Pronounce Post <laughs> Post pronounce Scotty Young. And Duggan. Um, you know, those guys, I feel like gave Deadpool the correct voice. Uh, so yes, I did not like his portrayal of Deadpool. He just kind of made him into a idiot. Yeah. And, but the art was nice because I really like Paco Medina and the artist after that. But I could. I agree with what you're saying about how they uh, how they characterize him. That was a time when I was reading. He had two two ongoing series going on on the time. It was Deadpool and then Deadpool Merc of the Mouth. And yeah. Yeah. Just Merc of the Mouth. Like that they just turned him into Johnny Bravo, where he was just kind of chasing chicks and just saying stupid things for the fact of saying stupid things. Yeah, um, Joe Kelly run. It was way more clever. It was more. It was way. It was way more fun. And he, it, they don't bring up much that he's a cancer survivor, and that's what that's what made him crazy was you know dealing with the cancer. So, I think there's a little bit of a loss on that character. Yeah, but I mean, if you're a completist and Deadpool is like your favorite character, or or you just like buying things like that, then, then yeah, more power to you. Um, I, nothing against the people that like that stuff. That's, that's good. If, if that's what you like, that was just my opinion. Um, but what the hell do I know? I know smart comic books. That's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so smart that Sucker Cleveland is going to uh, correct you on your pronunciation of his name. Again. Motherfucker. English is my second language, dude. Lay off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Way to pull the race card, Omar. <laughs> I'm making him feel that white guilt. <laughs> um, I never use that anymore. The race never, card? Yeah. Ask me how well that worked when I got pulled over. No hablo inglés. <laughs> Get the fuck out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper sprayed immediately, especially in Nashville. <laughs> Kentucky. Kentucky, bro. Close enough. Whatever. Oh, uh, man, now he's yelling. <laughs> yes, he is. He's Italian. He's not white. Somebody needs to give a guy... No, never mind. We'll end it there. You're right, <laughs> Michael Cleveland. Italians are not white guys. Uh, I don't know how to end it, guys. Uh, I think now is a good time to end it. Okay. Omar, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me mispronouncing creators' names all the time on my <laughs> channel called Near Mid Condition. Um, and tomorrow, or I'm sorry, Wednesday, I will be on this show called Cervezas y Comics, where I will be speaking in Spanish, talking about comic books. And I'm, I was telling Jess, I'm kind of nervous because I've never done, like, other than speaking to my parents and family and, like, some friends, I don't know if I can break down, like, uh, certain aspects of like comic book knowledge in Spanish. I don't. I don't even know what the fuck Wolverine is called in Spanish. Wolver El Wolverino. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice. You dumb racist bastard. <laughs> I'm gonna get booted off the show as soon as I show up. Mi favorito comic book is El Wolverino. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, so you know, I guess we'll see how it goes, man. So I'm doing that on Wednesday. But yeah, you can usually find me on my channel, Near Mint Condition, and with these fine folks on the Facebook group. K-Doc, no, I haven't found uh, the Walgreens Marvel Legend thing yet. I am looking for it. I haven't I'm found it yet. i looking for it, too. And the Are Silver you? Surfer. Yeah, and the Silver Surfer. I don't know what's going Is on. Is the Silver Has that been released yet? Yeah. Well, that was, 
apparently they're both out now. Ooh. I've heard. So. I want them both. Yeah, I need them to complete my shelf here. I need them to complete my life. <laughs> uh, oh, Gabe, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram as Gabe Infinity Watch in the Omnibus Collectors Facebook group. And uh, at home, reading 90s comics. Reading <laughs> Onslaught for the 80th yeah. time. Yes. Because Onslaught versus Marvel Universe is one of the best single issues ever produced. Ever. <laughs> ever, ever you can ever. find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and Omnidog's underscore vault on Instagram, where I've actually been posting some things recently. Very, so, proud, of Very proud of you. Thank you. And before Cycle Cleveland goes completely all Howard Stern, all Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> we will end the show now, and I'm, I'm echoing. echoing, so this would be a good time to stop. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching the show. Peace and love, peace and love. Thank you very much to all our viewers. We had a lively chat tonight, and uh, we had 80 viewers at one point, which is a record, so thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs>